Braking is something that a lot of us just take for granted. You pull on your levers, you slow down. It is reassuringly easy. But when you start to look into the skill a little bit more closely, when you start to master it, you'll see that actually better braking allows you to ride more safely, ride with more confidence, but also paradoxically, ride faster too. Why? Because knowing that you can stop quickly allows you to ride faster and more safely. Plus, a lot of common crashes actually happen because of braking. Of course, there's the classic, the rite of passage, sending it over your handlebars because you've grabbed a load of front brake, but actually a lot of crashes in corners don't happen because of the turn itself, but because of your braking. I am gonna run through both the basics and also the more advanced techniques as well, so that by the end of this video, you will have all the tools you need to totally nail this skill. Nice glasses, by the way. I know. But thanks. Before we start riding, a braking 101 for you. First of all, make sure your brakes are working well. Rim or disc, doesn't matter, just as long as they're functioning as intended. We will come back to that a little bit later on. Next, you need to know which is your front brake and which is your back brake. Now, it sounds simple, but it's incredibly important because whilst you will almost always squeeze both at the same time, you do have to treat them differently. You can't squeeze them both with the same amount of force. The golden rule though, is that you should always apply them gently unless you absolutely have to jam them on. And sometimes you'll have to. There will be occasions where you really have to jam them on. There might be a car that's pulled out in front of you. A sheep has wandered into the road. Or even a trusting camera person. Whatever the reason, there are a couple of things that you need to know. Firstly, your front brake is your friend. It is by far your most effective brake at slowing you down quickly. Look. Of course, we've all still got that fear of grabbing a load of front brake and then sending ourselves over the handlebars. But if you move your body weight back as you're applying the brakes, you can counteract that. And so when you're really hauling on the anchors, if you extend your arms, get your bum back behind the saddle and drop your heels, you'll be amazed at just how quickly you can stop. There's an age old phrase in cycling, don't break in corners. It's not a clever phrase, but it is a good one. And that's because most accidents that happen in corners are not because you're going around it so fast you lose traction. It's because you're going around it quickly and then you worry that you're going too fast, so you apply your brakes and that causes you to skid out. And that's because you only have so much grip on your tires and if they're already working hard to get you round the corner, if you then add another force into the mix, one that actually makes you wanna go straight on, it's potentially enough for you to lose grip and then because you're already leaning over, you'll end up on your butt. So you definitely want to do all of your heavy braking before you get to the entrance of the corner. It's a good rule to live by. However, rules are meant to be broken, right? And yes, of course, there will be times when you have to use your brakes during a corner. Perhaps you're on a really steep descent and you need to moderate your speed. So if that's the case, don't panic, just go back to that golden rule, apply your brakes gently. If you do need to stop mid-corner, then you're gonna have to stop turning at the same time. So straighten the bike up, and yes, that will mean that you run wide, so, hopefully you've got somewhere to go. But again, it comes back to that first point about cornering, that most crashes happen because people panic and grab their brakes mid-turn. So quite often you might find, you'll hopefully find, that if you just stay committed and off the brakes, you will make it through the turn. Just remember to stay looking at your exit as opposed to the edge of the corner, which is really not where you want to go. a bit weird in a video about braking, 
to now tell you not to brake. But it's a really good idea to question when you're applying your brakes and whether you really need to, like when going around corners, but also when going fast down a descent. Of course, you need to moderate your speed so that you're safe. But are there times when you're moderating your speed simply because you're nervous? You see, a pro cyclist would never apply their brakes until they really needed to slow down, like for a corner, for example, or for a sheep in the road. And so now you know that you can slow down safely and quickly. You can be liberated to go faster elsewhere. So, like when going down hills that you've worked so hard for to go up the other side. Miraculously, we're filming this on a dry day. It's the first for several years around here, apparently, but were it raining, we'd need to be mindful of our braking techniques because water on tarmac makes the surface more slippery. So you need to apply the brakes more gently than usual so that you don't skid. And the same is also true if you're riding on loose surfaces like gravel as well. It comes back to that first golden rule, apply your brakes gently. If you do start to skid, an advanced technique, but one that's great to learn, is to let go of your brakes just for long enough so that your tires regain traction before applying them again. It's what ABS does in cars, but you can do it manually on a bike very effectively. But it's at its best when it becomes instinct. I mentioned at the beginning about making sure your brakes are working properly, and I wanna come back to that. Rim brake or disc brake, it doesn't matter. Both can function brilliantly. With rim brakes, it's critical that you can squeeze the levers easily. If you can't, it's generally just a sign that you need to replace the cables because they've gone a little bit rusty. And it's important that you can squeeze the levers easily because if you can't, you can't feel what's going on at the rim and you can't accurately gauge how hard you're squeezing the lever and how much braking force you're getting at the wheel. With hydraulic disc brakes, that brake feel is more consistent, although I know rim brake aficionados out there, if you're looking after your rim brakes, that's not strictly true until you're riding in the rain. But with hydraulic discs, as each generation has improved on the technology, that brake feel has got even better. I mean, these latest Shimano ones have some teching called Servo Wave, which increases the amount of the lever where the pads are in contact with the disc. So they effectively give you more control, and they're more squeezable as well. Now, ironically, if you really are braking like a pro, you might not actually notice the difference quite as much between rim brakes and disc brakes. The fact is for the majority of cyclists, disc brakes will give you better braking more of the time. So what can you take from this video then? Firstly, make sure that your brakes work as well as they possibly can do. And familiarize yourself with them. Which is your front brake, which is your back brake? Generally, you want to apply your brakes at the same time and do it gently. When you're doing emergency stops, remember your front brake's your most effective one, but to counter those braking forces, you need to get your body weight nice and far back. Then also, have a think about when you're braking. So don't brake in corners unless you need to. And also, don't just drag your brakes because you're feeling nervous. Once you can stop quickly, it liberates you to go that little bit faster. And lastly, just take into consideration the conditions that you're riding in. So is it wet? Is it loose? That will mean you've got a little bit less braking power. Otherwise, enjoy your newfound speed, thanks to your best friends, your brakes. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe to GCN as well. And when you do so, click the bell icon so you don't miss any more videos.